it's NT125. We're looking at Chapter 2 now. We're going to look at some of the technologies involved with telephone, television, networks kind of things. So trying to dig a little deeper into the cabling and the, the how-tos of each of these, which again is going to lead us into a number of things we're going to talk about this semester on cabling up networks and types of cabling used and how it's done and that sort of thing. So that's where we're leading to. So, first one, they remind us three primary communication technologies covered in the book, phone, television, networks. We're going to cover the basics of these, um, all, all, all three of these in, in this chapter. So, the first thing we remind us of is telephone, which in the, in the chapter one, we at least alluded to the history of or touched on a couple of the key points of the history. Now, we're going to look a little deeper. Modern phone operates on the same principles as 100 years ago. Phone connects to a power source through a single pair of wires. Well, if I take a look at traditional phone wiring that I would have in a house, um, I'm going to see that it's usually a flat wire with four wires inside. Uh, the red, black, green, and yellow. If I were to look at those a little bit closer, what I find is the red and green make up a phone line for one phone. The black and yellow make up a second line for a second phone that you might have in a house. So if you have two different phone lines in your house, this four-wire cable would handle that. What they're telling you is if I look at just this one pair, the red-green, okay, the red-green, this is actually the phone wires used for a single phone. The power for that phone comes through that wire, and then in turn, as I talk, my voice onto the microphone modulates a signal bah, to go back across those wires to the phone company, to another phone, to the speaker on the other phone. That's the rough idea behind all of that. So if I look a little closer, there's the, the pinout. Here's what the cable jack would look like. Here it is close up with the pinout, and here would be an outlet that it plugs into. Just showing you the kind of the whole structure of it. They also remind us that the power causes current to flow in a loop modulated from a transmitter. Okay, here's roughly a schematic of, from the CO, those two wires, one is the tip, the other one's the ring. It is powered to my phone at my house. Um, real quickly, the phone company actually powers the phone for you. The idea being, if you zoom back in time, many houses did not have electricity in them when the phone came along. So the phone company powered your phone for you. If I zoom ahead to today, if I have a traditional landline phone in my house, that phone is powered from the phone company. If the electricity in my house goes out, my phone will still function and operate. Um, again, traditional landline phone hanging on the wall phone. Um, that will still function and operate because it's being powered from the phone company. Uh, 48 volts DC is being powered to your phone for you. That's what you're seeing right here. So those phone lines coming in will actually power your phone for you. That's what it's telling you. As I pick that up and I talk, my voice would modulate. Here's the, here's the handset, here's the microphone, here's the speaker. It's going to modulate a signal across there back to the phone company. Um, most phones today are now electronic. They're not the typical analog phone like we had before, you know, the physical hardwired phone hanging on the wall. Uh, most are electronic, uh, but it still does do current loop wiring where it powers the phone for you. Uh, the phones themselves are connected in parallel. So if I were to look at uh, a traditional landline phone in my house, and if I have a couple phones in my house, they're all actually tapped into the red-green wire. They're all wired in parallel. That way any phone will get power, and any phone can talk across that phone line and modulate a signal across the phone line back to the phone company. The bandwidth of my phone... It's typically 3,000 hertz. If I look at roughly the, um, the recognizable human speech is roughly 300 to 3,300 um, hertz. Yeah, 300 to 3,300 hertz. So there's roughly a 3,000, yeah, actually here it is right here, 300 to 3,300 hertz for recognizable human voice. That's the whole talking voice, not the ah! singing voice. Um, there, there's a recognizable human speech, so my phone line is tuned to carry that 3,000 hertz of bandwidth. That is what it's tuned to carry. Um, 
phones connected to th phones connected to worldwide network for typically through copper wire and fiber optic cables leading to switches so the book shows you a uh, a, a, a graphic like this where they show phone going into switches and so forth well I'm gonna take it a little step further that graphic is a little too simple uh, the phone at my house is going to go into a uh, CO switch and those switches are in turn connected to multiple other switches through trunk lines well the phone lines coming from my house into the switch are typically copper cable like we looked at back here this this two wire this um, copper cable in this case four wire but two wires for a single phone that is typically being used between my house and the local CO switch and from CO switch to CO switch or long distance office switches will be typically fiber optic cable and if I dig a little deeper what I find is the switches are connected in almost like a hierarchy structure here where the further I call away the higher it's getting routed in the switch um, switches to connect to a uh, office in another town so you can almost think of these as little towns down here and the toll centers might be um, a large town in an area so we might have mechanicsburg and camp hill connected into harrisburg and harrisburg would handle the interconnection between these towns if you will and then so forth up the line while well, local phones down here connected with copper in between the switches typically fiber optic so again remind you copper phone line for your home this kind of cabling here as I start moving between switches I move fiber optic and this also includes fiber optic that is transatlantic and transpacific under the ocean floor uh, and just out of fun I showed you a here's an undersea fiber fiber optic cable map showing you um, this is just a couple years old all the fiber optic lines that are undersea and trans-pacific transatlantic connecting continents and here's another one I found too showing you all the cable lines that are transatlantic trans-pacific uh, connecting countries on under the ocean floor and this shows you uh, connecting out a fiber line out across the ocean here and also the fact that these things lay on the ocean floor so they need to be tested for critter strength if you will and there actually is video of sharks biting cables so these have to be as I showed you back here uh, levels of armor to be able to handle the pressure of the water plus critters and everything else that happen to be out in the ocean and here shows you a little bit closer to what we have today if I look at a fiber to the home structure uh, the CO actually has a series of gear that's running a signal through switches out to a box in your neighborhood all fiber and then typically from the box in your neighborhood a fiber to your house to the ONT and then from there splits out to coax for TV um, regular phone line for your phone and you know um, twist a pair for your internet for your computer so that's the kind of thing I show you in this next picture here it's basically a switch structure to your house fiber optic to your house and then in your house this box this ONT splits the signal out for regular old phone line regular data line twist pair cabling for your computer and then coax for your TV if you will that's the kind of structure that we have today so there real quickly is some of the technologies for phone traditional up to what we're using roughly today this kind of structure today we'll come back in the next one and talk television and coax